Now, if you're anything like me, you occasionally stop by Hobby Lobby with a 40% coupon in your hand and see if there's anything worth picking up. Normally, we walk out with paint, brushes, maybe some storage containers, maybe a Marvel statue or two. Uh, if you're religious, you might walk out with a cross or a, a display with a proverb on it. But... <laughs> What we have never usually walked out with is the models because most of the models that they carry are actually 135th scale. And for a long time, I have went to different Hobby Lobbies, including online, uh, trying to find any 148 scale models through Hobby Lobby. And they just weren't there. So lo and behold, I went again this weekend on my, my usual monthly pilgrimage to Hobby Lobby and one of the last items I saw on the shelf of models, or at least this the shelf that this was on, was this Hobby Lobby USM4A3 76 tank, 76W. And it is, wait for it, 148 scale. <laughs> so this is a Seminole watershed moment. Uh, for us in this hobby and the reason I say this is this tank normally if you get it at your model store if you can even find a hobby boss in 148 which is very hard these days uh, most people just carry the Tamiya stuff will run you about 25 to 29 dollars at Hobby Lobby I believe this was listed for 21 or 25 by the time they applied the coupon my final cost was 16 dollars $16 for a 148 scale tank. So what we're going to do today is take a look at what you get, the sprues and stuff. I do not think I've ever built a Hobby Boss 148. I know I've built Tamiya. I built like two or three of Tamiyas. I even think I've built a Bandai, an old Bandai. But I never got the Hobby Boss because by then I had my fill of Shermans. You know, I didn't want to pay $30 just for another Sherman. But this could actually be significant because, you know, if they're going to make these available on a regular basis at Hobby Lobby, what I'm more interested in is actually conversion possibilities. Being able to take this Sherman now and get it for 16 bucks, and you can do anything from, you know, turning this into like a Sherman crocodile. You can maybe get a Calliope accessory to add on to it. Uh that you could maybe even take the haul out and use it as a uh, uh, kangaroo carrier. So there's a lot of possibilities that you can do with this if we're going to be able to get them for 16 bucks. I mean, most people would not want to spend $35 and then cut up their tank, you know, only to, to be disappointed with how it comes out. Whereas here, hey, you can cut it up. If you don't like it, you've got an extra parts. You go buy another kit and you use those parts on that kit. So let's take a look at what we get inside. All right, so first of all, before we look at what's inside, here's a little bit of a history on the tank and its uh, features, what distinguished it from the earlier, uh, the earlier M4 series of tanks. So if you want to read all of that, you can pause this. Uh, you get a sheet with the markings so it doesn't really say what theaters these markings would go to but that's interesting we get an instruction instruction booklet so you have to read the four assembly information we have kind of our parts layout we're going to start with the build, which appears to be they're going to start with the uh, wheels, the return wheels. That's the bottom hall area. If you've built any Shermans, most of this looks very familiar to you. Uh, so obviously, if you're going to be converting, though, you have to decide how far you're going to get. Like if you're just doing the kangaroo carrier. You know, you could stop here without putting the uh, turret or the hull on there. Although, I would probably cut more of this out 
I've seen people try to model kangaroo carriers with that little circle and that's to me that's just not feasible if you're gonna get miniatures in there you know cut all of this out so but anyway that's the instructions uh, now the only thing I do not like which I can tell you already is this and if you are terrified by rubberized tracks that have to be glued and melted then you might not want to get this kit right unless you got some other tracks you want to play around with and see if you can uh, you know if you can uh, kit bash it for 16 bucks you could try it I don't really have a big problem with these I don't like them but I can make them work usually if you melt them as they say or crazy glue them they will they will they will be fine so we've got some sprues some decals there's actually these are some fairly weird decals I mean I've seen a lot of the 75 millimeter I mean not 75 millimeter, but I've seen a lot of the Sherman decals and some of these are just not what I'm used to seeing so I got a little piece of paper here to protect them now those stars look huge those symbols look weird so yeah this is kind of interesting what's those words say well that's just thunderbolt 4 the psalm psalm 4 so that's the decals which i mean if you want to have different types of shermans that wouldn't be bad you have some photo etching which i hate i've never really worked with photo etching i usually just leave it off this looks like it's probably like the side uh rails or the tow bar hooks or something so you could leave it off i have plastic parts which i will probably substitute leftover parts from other kits but some people like photo etching i know qdc he likes photo etching so this is uh looks like the cover to the top of the uh body or hall this is the bottom of the hall there's nothing under there <laughs> so wait this must be the hall itself then like the upper portion uh, front some more panels you start to get into your uh, turret assembly your turret ring yeah I don't know it's gonna be real I don't know if I'm actually going to uh, kit bash this one this one I may do just build as a regular Sherman just because I have like four Shermans and I want five because I think that's usually what they fought in was was teams of five so I think I have like the regular M4 Sherman then I have the 75 millimeter uh, M4 Sherman then I have an, uh, another 76 millimeter Sherman then I have a Sherman Firefly so I think that's four so this would be number five uh, which would give me five Shermans unless like I said I kit bash it and turn it into something else which I'm thinking about but anyway this was just some more uh, this looks like parts that go on the tops and sides uh, these are obviously parts for your roller wheels 50 cal and a 30 cal that's nice just boxes uh, and then the, another one or not the quite the last I think this is a variant so that was another thing you can have a variant uh, haul these are the wheels and the turn wheels this is nice they give you a lot of backpacks to model on there that's actually pretty cool you could actually take these off and use these on figures or some other modeling so I mean the kit is actually perfect for some kit bashing I mean it's just begging you to uh, to kit bash it you know and do something out of the ordinary with it I mean they give you they give you a lot of the little extras that you could do that with uh, now let's see about them varying halls normally when you get to that part they'll tell you 
All right, so here we go. So turret, I'm sorry, I called it hall. So the e early turret assembly, it says select one. So one of the two included turrets to for assembly. Yeah, the problem is it doesn't really tell you which one is for which, like which model turret you would uh you would be choosing. I think it tells you how to assemble them both. From what I can tell, I think one of these was the weighted turret and one of these was not. So I think if you wanted to build the Sherman with the smaller gun that didn't have the weighted turret, you would go with this one. Uh, and this here looks like the weighted turret, I believe. Unless there's another one. No, there's not. So let's look back at the actual turrets and see if that's the difference. So here's one turret, which looks like it kind of has that weighted part on the end. And here's the turret without the weight, without that counterweight. So that's what they mean by you have two versions. If you put the 76 millimeter gun on there, then you would use the weighted turret. Let's see if you get different guns, though. I mean, because I think the 76 millimeter was longer than the 75. The barrel would have been longer. So I'm assuming if you can do different turrets, they have different gun barrels. So I see this gun barrel. And I think that's it. Oh, wait, no, here's this one. So you have the 76 millimeter gun barrel and then you have the 75 millimeter gun barrel down here. And I'm actually thinking of doing mine as a 75 millimeter. Just, I don't know, just because I like it because they were kind of the early models. Like I said, I have a 76 and I have a Firefly. So needing two 76s would not be as good as having just another bog standard Sherman, which would actually be pretty cool. But there you go, guys. This is available. At least you want to run and check your local Hobby Lobby. I hope a lot of you will go out and buy these. This is one case where I won't be upset if you go and buy them before I get there. Because I want Hobby Lobby to start carrying more 148. So I'm hoping that if, this, if these things sell out, they will actually start ordering a lot of different uh, kits in 148 scale. I know this was the last one at the Hobby Lobby I went to. So, which was kind of one of the things that made me buy it. Even though I hadn't went there for it, I said, well, heck, I'm going to buy it just so uh, this will sell out and they will, they will get more in. Take care, everybody.